Welcome to the Basic Business Marketing Crash Course Virtual Workshop. This virtual workshop was brought to you in partnership with the SBDC of Virginia Southwest Region. I wanted to create a workshop that could benefit small business owners because marketing is one of the most overlooked, vital assets that a business owner has as a tool in their arsenal to become successful. However, the majority of business owners that I talk to during a free consultation or through my onboarding process, a lot of them don't feel that it's necessary for their business. They, they, they feel that organic marketing, which is just people sharing your posts if you post on social media or, or people sharing your business if they drive by and see that it's open, they feel oftentimes that that's enough. Just being open is enough to drive enough business in order for them to be successful. Now, I don't want to discount the ability of organic marketing because it is a vital stepping stone or it's a vital branch in our tree of marketing things that we do in order to be successful. Organic marketing has its place, but it's really important to focus on paid marketing because you have the ability to find what conversion rates are, and you have the ability to turn up your business, the the busyness of your business. You have the ability to turn up how many clients or how many customers you want to obtain based on what ads you're running. And you eventually learn how to calculate what it's going to take to increase your load of clients coming in or customers coming in as you develop an understanding of fundamental marketing knowledge. So I feel that marketing is the most important part of running a business. You, you need to spend a lot of time understanding marketing for your business because of the fact a lot of businesses that are failing or possibly could fail over the next couple of years probably wouldn't if they focused their mind and their attention on their business's marketing efforts. And we are going to cover a lot of important concepts. I will also be sharing with you during the course of this short crash course, the same exact method that I will break down how you can utilize for your own business, regardless of what industry you are in or if you're a service-based or retail or e-commerce type business, the same method I used for one of my clients that garnered them over $1.4 million of revenue in just three months. And I will also go over that case study with you as well. So I look forward to sharing these ideas. I look forward to sharing these plays that I've come to understand really well in the digital world of marketing, because I find that for all of the clients I onboard, they do push those clients into success, their idea of success. So before we get started for a brief moment, I want to share with you who I am and what it is that I do so it can help you understand what it is that you're going to learn from this workshop and maybe it can help you understand how I can help you in the future. So my name is Joshua Lee Bryant and I've been a marketing consultant for the past five years, five-ish years. And as a marketing consultant, I build websites for companies. I run advertisements for companies. I develop complex marketing strategies that will help companies get where they want to go. Oftentimes, I'm onboarded to a client's business and they say, hey, help me figure out what's going wrong here. Why are we not making money? And I put together a concise plan of action to help guide them out of that deficit into profitability through marketing efforts. So it's a little bit about what I do. Marketing itself pertains to anything to do with your products, selling them, advertising them, figuring out how to make those products make you money or those services which are your products make you money and the diversification of product lines or your product mix so marketing covers a great deal of your business it can even get into the logistics of you know production delivery and finding out where your overhead costs are inflated when they shouldn't really be in certain cases so this crash course is going to have six big sections or six big modules 
they aren't going to be that long. They're going to cover all of the important information and I'm going to briefly go over those modules with you right now. So in module one, we'll be covering a brief introduction to marketing. We're not going to go over the entirety of marketing, just the most important topics that pertain to you as a small business owner to help guide you to go in the right direction when you're making a lot of decisions. You know, it's not as easy as just simply saying, hey, I'm going to boost a post on Facebook or I'm going to run an ad on Google. You have to make a concise strategic plan for why, where, what the target demographic is, why you're running an ad in, in the first place on that platform and where you're meeting that customer on the customer's journey to understand how to properly spend advertising dollars and we're going to go over some of those reasons why's and topics in this section some of the other things that we're going to be covering in this first section is big asks versus little ask companies because some things depending on what you sell are big ask and some of what you can sell are little small asks and based on what type of ask you're asking for from a, a, a potential consumer will determine the proper marketing strategy to run advertisements to garner results from those consumers and ultimately get them to buy your products or sign up for your services. But it takes a deep understanding of knowing where you fit in that category in order to understand what play you need to make um, to nurture a potential customer into becoming a paid customer. We will then get into the customer buying journey. It's definitely important to understand what a typical buying journey is for a customer based on what kind of ask a company is asking for, how much commitment the customer is going to have to put into that product or financially or, or a time commitment. So it's, uh, it's important to understand the customer journey to understand where you fit in when you've determined whether you have a big ask um, product or a small little ask product product. So it really determines, you know, a lot of different things. So we're going to slide into the customer journey after, you know, big ask versus little ask. Then we will slide into different types of ads and where those ads fit in to the customer journey and into your brand, into how they work for you. We will then get into a brief conversation about how to determine and understand what conversion rates are. Conversion rates are oftentimes the most important analytics to understand and digest when you are running marketing campaigns for your business because it helps you to understand if your ads are profitable or not. Um, and it also gives you the ability to scale if you understand your conversion rates properly, you then know that you can scale your ads up. Um, and that's how companies become multi-million dollar companies because they've figured out something that works, they understand that their ad spend is profitable, and they are able to spend a lot of money on ads because they know that for every dollar in ads they spend, they're getting two back or 150 back or three back. So um, that's why you need to understand conversion rates. And last but not least, we're going Going to get into brand awareness slash engagement slash lead generation type efforts. Um, but that's going to be module one. Module two, we're going to go over a case study for one of my clients backyard environments. We are going to model this virtual workshop off of the marketing plan and the strategy that I utilize to garner Backyard Environments $1.4 million in revenue over the three months I have been working with them. We're gonna utilize the case study that is backed by data um, and proven by our marketing efforts. And we're going to go over this case study so you can kind of visualize where all of these different things we're going to be doing in modules three, four, and five are going to fit in for your business. And it's important because it's going to function kind of as a structure. Now, every one of you guys have a different business and every one of you guys offer a different product or different products or different services. So no, absolutely, we won't be doing exactly piece by piece 
and the same graphics, the same images, the same uh, demographic targeting as as we as I utilized for backyard environments. But the same mentality that worked for them, the same structure, the same points that we're going to hit will work for you guys. But you will have to approach your individual advertisements that you were setting up and your, ad, and your individual graphics that you're setting up slightly different and your targeting will be different. But I'm going to teach you how to hit those points. But that's why we're going to go over a case study so you can see how these strategies have worked for one of my biggest clients I've ever had. Module three, we will be doing an intro to graphic design and I'll be teaching you how that you can design your own graphics in five minutes or less using a free tool called Canva. I utilize Canva as much as I can because it saves a lot of time and it makes life easy and, it, and you can design beautiful graphics, beautiful short videos or whatever you need um, to run advertisements and it's free. And I'm always about saving overhead expenses for business owners. Module four, we're going to get into Facebook ads. And in Facebook, you'll be developing your own ad. I'll show you step by step how to do it, and we will get right straight to it on Facebook ads in module four. In module five, we will be going over Google search ads. The reason why we're utilizing Facebook and Google search is because of the fact the strongest performing marketing campaigns I have ever put together for clients have came from a culmination of both Facebook and Google ads for different reasons. And it gets customers at different places in their customer journey. It's vitally important to run ads in conjunction with each other with social media and Google ads. And simply module six will be a brief conclusion. So now you have an overview of what you have to look forward to in this virtual crash course. So let's get started. We live in a world where you can run advertisements on billboards physically outside as old traditional billboards. You can run advertisements on digital billboards. You are able to advertise your business on social media, search engines. You're even able to buy advertisement space on websites specifically to have banner ads on them. You can run advertisements in the radio stations local to you, news stations for TV. You can even buy bumper stickers or car magnets and flyers and have business cards and print advertisements in newspapers and magazines. With so many different options, it's easy to get real confused as to where you should spend your marketing dollars. And for most business owners, they get so confused to the point where they're like, I'm not going to try at all. It's just a money gambit or it's just going to the casino and betting on roulette or, or playing craps or something. And I do agree. If you don't take time to understand the power of marketing, it is no different than buying a scratch off lottery ticket when you're running an advertisement campaign. And, you know, nine times out of 10, you're going to lose your the money that you've spent on those advertisements. But with a little fundamental knowledge, you'll come to understand that not only would you have the ability to turn a profit if you're spending money on different ads, you will actually eventually begin to predict what that profit would be. Is so it having a deep fundamental understanding of the market or that sector of the industry and utilizing a combination of different types of ads is what really proves to be successful, but also it depends on where the customer is at the buying journey and if it's a big ask versus a little ask. You heard me mention a few times, there's a difference between a big ask and a little ask type of service or type of product. We're going to be talking about backyard environments case study in a little bit. Now, the reason I also like to utilize them in this workshop is because they have a very big ask. They are a construction company that specializes in luxury pools and outdoor living spaces in the Dallas Fort Worth, Texas area. And you're like, what's a big ask? Well, a big ask, it either involves one or two things or both of them together. It requires a whole lot of money from the customer 
in order to buy or to get the service, or it offers a commitment of a large amount of time, or it offers a commitment of being very uncomfortable. You know, if you go to the dentist, you know, it could quite be a medium ask because you're uncomfortable. But, you know, the catch-22 is you need the services from the dentist. So you're like, yeah, I'm going to be uncomfortable for a little while. The reason I want to utilize backyard environments for this use case is they have a big ask in all three to four categories. In order to get something from them, you're looking at a minimum investment of maybe $50,000 for an outdoor living space or, you know, a, a brand new luxury pool or a spa because they custom build it. You're also very uncomfortable because your backyard is torn up for a few months while they're installing you know, in, in building this product into your backyard. So just explaining a few of the reasons why Backyard Environments has a very big ask, you can understand why it's very complicated in order to extract real customers from advertisements and convert them into paying customers for them. Because it's a lot different than selling a candy bar. It's a lot different than selling a haircut. It's a lot different than selling an oil change, which gets us into what some of the other levels of ask are. So, you know, like a, a candy bar or a fidget spinner or a pen or a notebook or, you know, some of those things, they're a little ask. Customers will buy those on impulse. Social media ads alone can sell the crap out of little ask services or little ask products because it doesn't involve a lot of contemplation from the consumer. They either want it or they don't, and they'll know it as soon as they see the advertisement. They either do or don't want it. So little ask companies can survive on advertisements for social media alone because there's not that much that's necessary in order to turn a conversion from someone seeing an ad in order to uh, making a purchase. You know, a more medium ask type of product is maybe a cell phone, um, maybe an instrument, maybe a type of camera. Um, you know, as far as services go, I would like to say a medium ask is, you know, maybe more so along the lines of car tires, maybe going to a hotel, maybe a concert, maybe even a new computer. And the reason why is because there's more investment necessary, maybe a little more time necessary for the consumer to make the decision whether they want to go with something or not. So a more medium ask, you know, customers do a lot of research. They start to do research on, you know, your competitor's products. Maybe they see an ad on social media and, it, and it's for a new phone that you're offering or something. And then they have to compare the specs to, you know, other companies. Maybe you have a hotel. They compare your hotel's reviews to other hotel reviews. You know, so you can kind of understand that the consumer journey is a little different based on the ask. Because with a small ask, you know, even like a restaurant or something being a small ask, the consumer is just like, that looks good. I'm going to go try it. They don't give much more thought into it than that. They, this looks awesome or cool or trendy. I'm going to, I'm going to try it. The medium ask, it's like, yeah, I kind of need this or I kind of want this, but is there something better for a better value or that has better reviews than this product right here? So you get into the, the process of needing to nurture a little bit that potential consumer if you garnered them from social media if they didn't know your product existed at all which is what introduces something more in the long along the lines of you know finding and hitting a consumer where they're further along in their customer journey than you just giving them the idea about a product that they haven't even considered yet and that's what we're going to get into in a little bit about when the proper time is to use certain types of ads. Um, large, big asks are like backyard environments. They require a large time commitment, a large uncomfortable commitment temporarily, and a large financial investment. 
um, oftentimes people have to get loans in order to obtain their services. So you can see why it's such a big ask. Another big ask is, you know, being in, in, in the world of real estate. You know, a lot of real estate agents get into real estate because they think that everybody wants to buy houses and everybody wants to sell houses. And yeah, in some times of the market, that's the case, but they don't realize how big of an ask it is to get um, you know, somebody to sell a house or to buy a house in the first place. Um, and oftentimes for most Americans, especially in my generation, a lot of us will be lucky to be able to afford a home in our generation with the prices of real estate right now and in the interest rates anyway. Um, so you can understand why a lot of times, you know, most people would only buy a house one time their whole lifetime if they can even afford to. Um, another big ask is, you know, if you're in car sales, it's a pretty big ask. Um, if you're a new car sales, used car sales, I feel like um, is more of a medium ask. So you can kind of understand why it takes more than just running a brand awareness or a social media ad for a big ask to start converting because you're going to have to introduce some things like lead magnets that give somebody an incentive to to give them your email and I mean to to give you their email and their phone number so you can have a sales representative call them and nurture them into thinking about and really considering your big ask product because there's going to be a lot of consideration um, and thought processes and nurturing and uh, persuasion happening in order to get them to actually close the deal. As far as the difference between brand awareness ads, engagement ads, and lead generation ads, there's a certain type of ad you want to run based on the platform that you're running it on, along with depending on what you're trying to achieve in a certain moment for your business. And it also determines on what kind of product you're offering. I know there's a lot of dancing around that I'm doing, but it's it's kind of this abstract consensus I'm trying to really get you to understand. So if you have a small ask product and you're a restaurant or something like that, you can survive off of brand awareness ads. And a lot of businesses, that's the only ads they run that are, you know, restaurants, you know, like McDonald's, Wendy's. Um, mom and pop shops, you know, they can survive off just social media ads and they don't have to get you to go to their website. They're just trying to get you to go to their company. If you have, you know, retail or you're a hair salon or, um, you know, something along the lines of that, you can just simply run brand awareness ads on and stick with social media and you know, stick with digital billboards and, and such. And, and you'll do great off of running ad campaigns on there. Engagement ads are kind of funny, you know, social media changes month by month and, and algorithms change and so does strategies, you know, and, you know, unfortunately for me, I, I'm, I'm not, a, I can't just be a one trick pony to where I learn how to run ads one time and then it, I, I just know, unfortunately, every single month I'm relearning almost everything because algorithms change and how you run ads change. Um, you know, so month to month things change. You know, what we're covering here stays the same, this whole, you know, topic that we're talking about in this crash course, it'll all stay the same because the general consensus of marketing doesn't really change. How you market does. Um, so nowadays, engagement ads are important because on social media, if you're running website traffic or you know simply um, brand awareness ads, you'll find they don't get a lot of likes, um, comments or anything like or anything like that. And really to a business owner, likes and comments doesn't matter. The only thing that matters to a business owner is the conversion, the sell, getting a sell, getting a new customer from the ad. But there's a paradox kind of that if you were to run an ad, an A-B test, you know, so two of the same ads, right? But this ad has 50 likes and 25 comments and this has zero likes and zero comments. The ad with all the comments and likes are going to drive more conversions for the same cost compared to the ad that has no likes because it's psychological perception. It's, it, it's, it's social trust, social validation that these potential consumers are seeing in the ad that has likes and comments versus the ad that doesn't. An engagement ad is an ad that runs specifically to drive comments or likes on an ad. And it's important to always run an engagement ad in conjunction with a lead gen ad versus um, a brand awareness ad. Because if you run it together on the same ad, 
then that one post or that one advertisement on social media would outperform an ad that wasn't running an engagement ad with it because there's social proof and social validation for potential consumers that are seeing the performance of that ad over time. And it, and it incentivizes them almost in a psychological reward way to interact with it. Now, what a lead generation ad is, is where you're running ads specifically to generate leads. And this and this method is specifically important for medium to big ask businesses. This method is the bread and butter for my backyard environments campaign because where they are such a large ask, there's no way, it's virtually almost not that possible to convert people simply into paying customers off of simply just running an ad. There's going to be some nurturement that has to happen for those people. Um, and, you know, so whether we were just going to ask them, hey, do you want to buy or do you want to invest in a, in a new pool in, a, in, a, in an outdoor living space? We would blow our ad budget if we wasn't collecting some lead generation information, you know, their phone number, their email, their name and incentivizing um, that conversion for them. So a, a lead generation ad is you simply running an ad to generate contact information so you can have constant communication, whether it be through your salesperson, through um, autoresponder email marketing services, um, or however you see fit to, to close that sell. So for some of you guys, you'll survive off of brand awareness ads. Some of you guys will survive mainly off lead generation ads. I do want to have a small disclaimer, though. There's a lot of business owners and a lot of people that will do what's called buying leads. It happens a lot in the insurance sales world. It happens a lot in the real estate sales world. It happens a lot in the construction. Um, they'll buy Angie leads or something, and it's ridiculous. And the reason I want to strongly encourage you not to engage in that type of, in that type of practice is oftentimes you're going to pay a lot more for a lead through a lead selling service than it would even cost to generate the lead anyway. And I know you're like, well, what's the difference? If a lead's a lead, then why shouldn't I pay for one? The difference is a lot of these services resell these leads over and over. I have a friend that's in insurance and they bought some leads from a company and they talked to some of these people and these people said that they were the 13th, 14th, and 15th insurance sales agent that had called them. Why would you want to buy a lead that's been stepped on 50 times and then think you're going to actually get the sell and you've already had to pay 30 to $50 for the lead? It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. The difference is if you generate a lead from an advertisement, your company is the only company that's had access to that lead. You're the only person that's going to reach out to that lead unless you sell the lead and it's, it's ethically wrong. But you're the only person they've heard from unless they've, you know, called another company too or one of your competitors. So I always side with lead generation over buying leads because lead generation ensures you're the only person that's called these people. And it gives you the ability to be a little more critical on yourself because if you can't close the deal on the leads you generate from advertisements, then you need to look at your salespeople and find out why you couldn't close the lead or why you couldn't nurture the lead. It's not the lead that's bad. If it if it's a real human that filled out a lead contact form, it is not that person's fault that the deal didn't close. They made the active decision as a human to fill out a form because they wanted more information about what your company was offering. But if your company failed to close the deal, then there's something in between that lead being generated and you closing the deal that you need to focus on. So lead generation is different um, than buying leads. It's one of the most vitally important types of ads to run as lead generation. A brief conversation on understanding conversion rates is when I have an initial consultation, I offer free consultations to everybody. And under this video, matter of fact, you'll see, you know, get your free consultation here. Um, I offer a free consultation to all business owners, and one of the first things I'll ask them, what is the average worth to you for a new customer? You know, for Backyard Environments, which we'll get into in a minute, their value on average is worth 
$25,000 for every new customer. And of course, some customers to them in profit are worth $50,000, $70,000, some a little less than $25,000. But on average, they profit about $25,000 per customer. A lot of doctor's offices, they profit if it's primary care or psychological, you know, doctor's offices, they profit, you know, somewhere between two and six grand per customer. Um, you know, so depending on what type of product you offer, you know, yours might be worth less. A customer to you might be worth, a new customer to you might be worth $50. A new customer to you might be worth $100. A new customer to you might be worth $100,000. It, it just depends on what you offer and what it is that you're selling. The reason why understanding what a customer is worth to you is important when trying to comprehend what your conversion rate needs to be is because it gives you an understanding of how much money you can viably spend on advertisements and still make a profit. And it helps you determine if running advertisements is profitable for you based on the products that you have. And I would suggest that if you don't find running advertisements profitable for you, you may have the wrong business. You may have the wrong product. And unfortunately, I'm not in the business of telling people what they want to hear. I, I just spill facts. It's it's an innate quality of me because I, I try to help people. And sometimes telling people what they want to hear is it's what a lot of my competitors do to try to garner business, but it doesn't help the business owners that they onboard. Um, I sincerely care about helping business owners. Um, there's always profits to be made with running ads if your products um, align the right way, um, if, you're, if your offering aligns the right way. So to understand conversion rates, say on average, I sell a product for $1,000, but say my overhead expenses and operational expenses account for about 50% of all revenue coming in. So that makes my bottom line profit 50% of that $1,000. So I know for every new customer I obtain, I profit $500. This is where most business owners stop and where they decide they don't want to run ads because they're like, I want to take that $500 and, and keep it. They fail to understand they could get 10 times more customer for every organic customer that comes in the door if they ran paid advertisements. So then you try to find out, well, what am I willing to take? If I'm making $500 profit per new customer because my overhead's 50%, how much of that $500 profit am, am I really willing to let go of in order to have more customers? And that's a decision that you need to make. I can't tell you what that decision is for you. But you need to determine what amount you're willing to be left with. So if I'm willing to say, I'll be happy if I make $250 of the $1,000 in revenue a new customer generated in order to you know, obtain extra customers. Because in nature, it seems right that I could have maybe 10 new customers for that. So as long as we're running ads and you can quantify at that rate, as long as I'm running ads and as long as I know that I can quantify that for every new customer I get, I only had to pay $250 in ads and I'm still making $250 profit, it's a game changer. That's all right. But if your margins are thinner, then you can't maybe sacrifice so much money to obtain a new customer. And I know already a lot of you are discounting what I'm saying. Man, I have to pay $250 in ads to get a new customer. No, I'm just I'm sharing an example of what experiences with a very big ask company. You know, for backyard environments, we were able to get them new customers for $144 a customer. They're profiting, you know, $25,000 a customer at $144 a customer. Yeah, load down more customers. $144 a customer is nothing for the profit that they're making. You know, so for a large ass company, the cost per customer acquisition is going to be very high. Um, but if you run a company that has a, a small ask or you have a, a low ticket offer, low ticket, um, you know, uh, 
product, you know, obtaining a new customer would be fairly inexpensive. It might be a couple dollars per conversion if you were running a, a, a lawn mowing service or so you, you get what I'm saying. And, and so conversion rates need to always be understood with your business to see if the ads you're running are profitable, because if you were running ads and you found that your actual bottom dollar profit line for every new customer you obtain is $50, but it's costing you $75 to obtain a new customer, then you need to reconfigure your ads or try to figure out where to lose some overhead in your product or maybe your product it costs too much to manufacture and you're not making enough bottom line in order to be profitable, which is also an aspect of marketing. We, we try to get in the, we try to get deep into understanding, you know, is a product a viable product based on what your overhead expense is and what your take home is. It might not be a viable product. And a lot of people get into business with uh, products that are not viable and it's unfortunate, but it, it, it happens sometimes. Um, so a conversion rate and understanding it's vital. It, to, to being able to understand if um, advertisements are profitable and if um, you should run them at all um, for a certain type of product. And that's how when you understand conversion rates um, and what a conversion cost is, that's how you will be able to understand exactly why running marketing campaigns are important. Because you can tweak up your campaigns and bring in a lot of customers um, at your leisure in times of, of 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 business not being that great, um, but there is a word of caution. If if a new customer means human intervention, which will mean that for the majority of you guys um, in your business ventures, then you have to be careful how much you turn up your ads. You know, for like me, every new customer I get for my consulting business requires my human intervention. Because I have to do a consultation. I have to do the actual work. I can only handle so many new customers every week. And if I was to obtain more customers than what I could handle, then I would be wasting my ad spend and I'd be blowing my budget because I couldn't, you know, service all of them. But it's just like, you know, going into an overly busy restaurant, you know, there's a wait time. I don't want that for my my clients or my customers. So I have to find that fine balance of what is the proper ad spend to obtain just enough customers to keep me really busy, but not too many that people will be waiting for weeks on their work. Um, but there are some businesses and, you know, some of my side businesses that I run don't require human intervention. You know, they're courses or they're digitally fulfilled or automated businesses to where I don't have to be careful how much I'm turning it up as long as my um margins are the way I want them, I can just infinitely scale up because it doesn't require any human intervention to to, to get the product to the customer or for the logistics to work. So um, do be mindful of that balance if your business does require human intervention. So I know this was a lot of talking so far and we are just now getting out of module one, but I think it's important to not shortcut any of this workshop because there's a lot of stuff that goes into making a, a, a marketing strategy, a lot of um, different variables that go into making a successful campaign. But you have to understand some of those fundamental concepts, even if they're a little more abstract than I would like them to be for explanations purposes or for or for the the descriptor. Um, but it's 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 important to understand some of those concepts, especially as we get into the rest of this uh, workshop. So now we'll be going straight to the computer to get into the backyard environments case study, which then will lead us straight into putting in the elbow grease and working side by side, uh, step by step along with each other uh, to set up you know some graphics and then some ads for your business. And I hope that you will find value out of this workshop, because if I, when I first got started in business, would have had some of this understanding, I feel like I would have flourished years ago and it wouldn't have taken me so long to 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 make what I want to make as a business owner. So let's get straight to the computer. All right. So we've made it to the computer and we're going to quickly, briefly go over the case study with backyard environment, what they needed. They're a distinguished provider of luxurious tailor-made outdoor living spaces in the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas regions. 
They sought to revolutionize their online presence with a cutting edge website that would effortlessly balance functionality and aesthetic appeal on both desktop and mobile platforms. They also were in pursuit of someone to oversee their continuous marketing efforts. At the time, they were dependent on um, Angie leads and they had been buying leads that were stepped on like we were talking about earlier. And they were looking for a way to generate their own leads without having to count on leads that had been stepped on. You know, so of course I developed a plan of action um, and stuff. Here's, a, you know, their showroom. Here's um, a pool that they had built. My plan of action was I conceptualized a comprehensive multi-channel marketing strategy, which incorporated a tactical blend of PPC retargeting and intent-based keyword search ads. Uh, the combination was designed to generate qualified leads from prospective clients who were actively seeking to enhance their properties with a new custom pool pergola, outdoor kitchen, or outdoor living space. Uh, prior to initiating the advertising campaign, my first responsibility was to design and implement a website um, for backyard environments. Um, and additionally, we set up a email marketing automation CRM platform to help their sales team nurture um, the, the influx of leads coming in from our marketing efforts. So for their website, I've got another uh, tab pulled up. We'll go to their website to show you how it looks. Um, give you a brief preview of what it looks like. Um, you know, up here is just a shot of some stuff that they do. We have some pop-up initiations as well. Um, as we scroll down, we made sure that we would have a pop-up over here. So if someone was on their website after about 15 seconds, they could um, be assisted if they wanted to engage in a live chat. There's another pop-up. Um, trying to engage people that it comes in in a few minutes, trying to engage people to submit for a free quote and custom 3D design concept. Um, I know a lot of people are hesitant to you know, put a pop-up like that on their website. The proof is in the pudding. We've garnered 30% extra leads from this pop-up. Um, so I stand by my um, decisions to, to, to add a pop-up for lead generation on the website. And, you know, just some general information about their showroom, um, you know, engaging with them, you know, some of the things um, and some social verification. You know, they're Google guaranteed. They're backed by good contractors. And there's another free estimate for them. We just now set up a blog on their website as well. So and here's some stuff. Um, that's kind of what their website looks like. If you interact with, you know, anything on here, just go to pools and spas. It'll take you to their pools and spas gallery. Um, and whatnot it tells you a little about a little bit about their process, but you get it. A website's a website, so you know, here's a website, um, and that's what it looks like. As far as the email marketing um, automation and CRM platform, we utilize Flowdesk um, because Flowdesk really works to bring in leads um, and categorize them. And you see here, you know, there's just different segments for their leads. So if leads come in, they're in one of these red things. Um, after sales team follows up with them, they're in the yellow um, segment. And then after they've completed the sales process, they're in the green segment there. Um, and there's different automation plays um, that happen based on where someone is in. Because data suggests that you are 75% more likely to close a deal if the person submitting a lead form um, has some kind of interaction within the first two minutes. You know, most companies, um, you know, it takes longer for them to reach out to a lead once they submitted a form. So that's why we, we leaned on Flowdesk for this, because as soon as someone submits a lead form, um, they get instant um, uh, an instant response um, and is nurtured by um, some automations immediately um, through Flowdesk. Uh, so that's really important. Um, so then as far as ads go, we did Google search ads because like I explained earlier, um, people here, we're not looking to really push a heavy 
um, marketing objective for people that are just maybe thinking about an outdoor living space or just people maybe thinking about um, a pool. Uh, also, we're not trying to educate people on why they need one or why they need an outdoor living space. We're looking to capture people on their customer journey when they are actively willing to push the button and get a consultation for a pool or outdoor living space. So, you know, 75% of our campaign was devoted primarily to Google ads. Um, and we utilize search terms, pool contractors near me, outdoor living space designers near me, um, you know, such things like that. And we based it in a geographical area within their service area. So we knew only people seeing these ads and that had the ability to click on these ads were people that were in that area and the only people that would see it were people looking for something that they offered right then. I mean, you can see here the click-through ratio um, was 7.8%, and that's phenomenal. Um, so as far as our Facebook and Instagram cold targeting ads, you know, I didn't have a lot of um, – belief in Facebook social ads, you know, for this use case, because it is such a big ask, but where we are utilizing retargeting um, in this marketing campaign, because their budget allowed us to. Um, a brief explanation, retargeting ads are ads that get served to people that have been on your website, but did not convert, or people that have interacted with your social media um, account. So I wanted to serve retargeting ads primarily with these um, uh, graphics that I designed specifically because, you know, maybe some people didn't realize they give a free quote and free custom 3D design concept, which the 3D design concept itself, you know, is um, can be over a grand for some of their competitor companies. And also they have a really cool leverage on VR technology where they give people the uh, ability to experience what their outdoor living space would look like utilizing the power of Google Earth in VR with their custom designs so people could fully immerse themselves in what their backyard would look like after um, the construction has completed. So I thought those were two really awesome plays for social media. And also we did a ribbon cutting grand opening ad, um, you know, for social media as well. So for retargeting ads, we primarily focused on showing proof of their work. So we utilized a lot of photos from their gallery of previous work that they've completed and um, targeted people to go straight to their website, fill out a lead form. Um, so the results of our work and you can see, you know, as soon as we launched the website, um, you know, we left it open for a month just to see it baseline. And I think we had on average maybe 10 to 15 people uh, visiting the site organically a day, which is why it's virtually non-existent. Immediately, you know, we shot up 3K, 4K um, a month um, with website traffic, but website traffic's, you know, not the point of what we're doing. We had a total of 10,995 visitors um, to the website over that uh, three-month period. Um, 9,700 of those people were different people, unique visitors. And ironically, 93% of the total website visitors we had um, were located in the Backyard Environment Service area when they visited the website. And that's great. But once again, we're not here for website traffic. Here's just um, some Google search ads uh, analysis. And you can see here um, some of the keywords we targeted, pool builders near me, pool contractor, pool contractors near me, pool builders, you know, stuff like that, because that's people actively looking for um, what they have to offer right then. And it was geographically based. Um, meta ads, here's just, you know, what some of the um, analytics were looking like, post engagements and stuff like that for the ad spend amount of impressions, the reach. Um, Here's the email marketing uh, analysis. Um, but what we are here for, I'll go ahead and read this off to you though. Out of the 2,743 emails that were auto response driven, um, we had an average open rate of 51% with an active call to action click rate of 5%. And I even state here, some business owners believe that email marketing has no effect on the outcome of their marketing efforts. This data would suggest otherwise. And it would. Most Business owners that I talk to when I am in, in that um, uh, free consultation with them, 
they seem to believe that people do not open emails from email marketing because it's spam. And a lot of it is spam. But if you drive a directive of only sending emails that are relevant to the reason someone signed up to receive them in the first place, if it's about their the reason they signed up as a, as a lead, they are inclined to open those emails. And an open rate of 51% I couldn't be happier with that. And then, you know, a call to action click rate of 5%, that's 5% extra than we wouldn't have had. That's 51% we wouldn't have had um, without the emails. Um, so let's get straight to the total conversion rate and return on investment, because that's the point of this case study, right? So the total quantifiable new customers in the pipeline from my marketing campaign was 59 verified new customers through lead forms. Um, the total ad spend during the four month marketing campaign was $8,268, which put us at the average cost per conversion was $140 per new customer. And once again, this is for a very, very, very big ask company. You know, most people, most of the time when I'm having lead generation objectives, you know, most of the time that cost per lead or the cost per new customer is less than $20. Um, but for them, you know, there were some ad campaigns they were running before they onboarded me and they were paying upwards of $400 per new lead through Facebook um, leads. So it's a fantastic um, change. The average net Profit per their new customer, like I said a little earlier, is $25,000 for every new customer they get. Some customers, they make more off. Some customers, they make a little less. So the average is $25,000. The total estimated potential net profit as a result of this marketing campaign is $1.4 million. And that's fantastic on a spend of $8,000. So you can kind of see in this case study that it took an effort of multiple different things in culmination together to really achieve that desired outcome. You know, because we did have solid um, traffic through Google search, and most of our action came from Google search that submitted the lead forms. But we also have cheaper traffic through social media, which is why social media is, attra is attractive. Um, you know, we had 540 new page likes and, you know, 3,000 new uh, website visitors and, and whatnot um, and 110 event responses because we did run an event ad. The main goal was conversions, though. So that's why I don't care that much about how many people liked the page or I don't care about how many people went to the website. We didn't even calculate how many people called the business because we wanted to quantify specifically lead generation through lead forms. And that's um, that's what we did. So I know our initial goal, they said they wanted more than five leads a month um, at this ad spend. And we got them about 15 leads a month. So it's fantastic. Now, for a company that doesn't make as much money as they do per new customer, of course, you'd want a lot more new customers than 59 new customers in four months. Um, but for them, 59 new customers in four months is a pretty big deal, um, as you can see. So this concludes this case study. We're going to bounce right into Canva and show you how to design graphics for your ads. And then we will directly get into Facebook and Google ads so you can then understand how to create some ads. So I'm excited to move forward with this for you guys. Let's get straight to it. All right. So now we are in Canva. And I'm going to show you guys multiple ways of designing graphics um, in short little videos for your social media ads. Um, and a lot of them are utilizing um, templates in Canva because that's the point of Canva. That's what they're there for. So, you know, you go to canva.com. Um, you can see how it's spelled up there. And there's so many things that you can utilize it for. So let's just say we're using it for something for social media. If you look here, it'll show their popular stuff. They have, they have Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Say we're going to make a post for Facebook. So let's say we're going to do Facebook post in landscape. You simply click that. 
and it'll load up the aspect ratio that you need the post to be right here. Then over here is going to be templates that can fit this aspect ratio, which is genius. Some of them are video based templates. Some of them are image based templates, um, which is super cool. So let's go and say we're going to have a cell, right? So if we just type in cell right there, you know, they've got some homes for sell, you know, for real estate stuff. If you scroll down here, you'll have a bunch of different things, you know, so new car arrival for, you know, if you're a car shop, dealership, um, flash sell, you know, they've got new product sell type stuff. They have all kinds of different types of images that you can use for things, you know, so this might be a, a, a really cool, um, trendy looking, um, you know, graphic. So say if we wanted to change this up, right? So we could say fall into cell or something like that. Oh, or fall into um, fashion. Whoop. Fall into fashion cell, right? And then we can have www.yourwebsite.com, you know, just like that. And all you have to do to change these images here is if you go to uploads, you can simply click uploads and upload what files you want to go here. And then you can just simply drag and drop, you know, what files you want to go in here. Um, you know, so for, you know, for this, if I just shoot, if I like that image, I could put that image there. If I like this image, I could put it there. If I like this image, I could put it there. And then you would, um, you know, in theory, it, it really is, it, it's really easy to utilize um, Canva for things like that. Say, you know, we wanted to create something else. You can simply search up here what you, what kind of something you want to to create. So, you know, so say you're going to make a business card. If you s type in business card, you can see there's all kinds of different business card um, templates you can use front and back. Um, and all you would do, you know, say you wanted to use this, this is kind of a cool little template. Say we're going to use this design here. So there's a picture there. I don't want some other guy on my business card. Say if I drag myself there and drop it, well, there I am. All I got to do is type in my name here. Probably add my middle name as I always do. So, you know, Joshua Lee Bryant, if I say marketing and web design, connect with us, bam, just like that. You, you whoop together a quick little business card. You just got to change this stuff around and you're good to go. You know, just change the back a little bit. It, it's cake. You can, you can design all kinds of stuff on Canva. If you were going to design a video, you would simply click video there and it'll show you different types of videos. Um, they have stuff aspect ratioed for. Um, you know, say we click that one right there. And then over here, we have a bunch of different options. Oh, here's pretty cool. So let's apply this to all five pages. A video utilizing those individual pages. Are you looking for a new gem? Follow these tips. Instead of that, check this out, right? And then, you know, say one, go to your website, right? Because we got him on the computer anyway, but if you didn't like that video, you can literally go to uploads, you know, find a video you have in the system, drag it over and replace that video with your video. It, it's, it's hilarious how easy it is, you know, to select the membership that fits your needs, right? And then be like, come work out.
and say we wanted to, you know, replace that with a video of people working out, you could, you know, just drag it from your uploaded files and drop it right there. Then when you're ready to share the video, well, you would check the video out first, you know, click play and it would preview it for you. But all you got to do is click share, click download, and it'll download the video for you. It's that easy. So I challenge you real quick to make some kind of a graphic, whether it be a picture or whether it be a video that you can utilize for the Facebook ad that we are going to be creating next. Because as soon as we get done on Canva here, we're going to be going over to Facebook ads manager and well, meta ads manager because meta owns Facebook now. Um, but then we're going to be creating an ad um, to be published on ads manager through Facebook. And you're going to need a graphic um, or video for that ad. So I encourage you to play around here on Canva and create something, pause this video and create something that you really think would look nice for your business. Um, and that could help your business, um, you know, get some traffic from this ad that we are going to set up on Facebook. You know, um, if you click flyer, just like I did right there, there's a lot of good stuff. Um, flyer right here on Canva. If you click that, there's a lot of good stuff in the template section here, you know, for you to pick from. And you can further, um, you know, search a little deeper if you just search whatever search term here you need. And say, for instance, if, um, you know, this is the flyer I liked and I done changed this around exactly the way I wanted it to look to download it onto the computer, you just click share and click download. Leave it in PNG format because you want it in PNG format. Click download, and just like that, it'll download to your computer. And you then have that image that you can upload for Facebook um, to then utilize for um, the Facebook ad that we're going to create. But that concludes this video about Canva. Let's move straight to Facebook. All right, we are inside Facebook and we're on our Facebook page on a computer. Um, and we are getting ready to go over basic Facebook ads. And I'm gonna set up that with you one-on-one. Um, -on -one. That way you know how to set them up. Now, there's two ways of setting up ads um, on Facebook. You know, you can utilize Ads Manager on Facebook and it's, Complex, that's what I utilize for um, handling my clients' um, workload and my workload um, as a marketer. But, um, you know, for people that aren't experienced, you know, utilizing the ability to boost posts within the page without navigating Ads Manager is one of the easiest ways to get started with running ads on Facebook. Now, We'll be covering setting up basic ads and basic targeting in this workshop. Um, but of course, if you would like to understand or um, you know maybe have a professional run um, ads and ads manager for you and and stuff like that, I do do free consultations. Um, so right under this video, you'll see there's a form um, you can fill out for free consultation. Um, you feel free to fill that out if you know this is something um, more than you think you want to get into. But it is very easy um, to just boost posts um, and still achieve some pretty effective targeting. Um, it, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that Ads Manager does have, but it can get you really close to being there. And it'll get you a lot further than not running ads at all. You know, so what I'm going to have you do is now that you have your graphic made from Canva, or if you have your graphic designed a different way, you're going to make a post using that graphic. So you're just going to simply, you know, type what you're going to type um, here. Um, make sure you include your website um link or the link to your sales page on your website under it um and then you're going to click photo video and add your photo video to your um post or to your um yeah to your post so 
for like example here, you know, I have um, an image, you know, and then here I have the link that I wanted people to visit if they were to click on this post. So I'll be using this one, for example, um, to walk you step by step with. So if you have your post posted, um, you'll refresh your page and scroll down to it and click boost post. I'll scroll up so you can see over my face. Click boost post. And then it'll bring you up into a new page. Now it has different options here. And a lot of people would, you know, most often be like, oh, automatic, I'll do automatic. If you do automatic, you blow your budget. <laughs> I promise. Um, so you would change to what you're trying to achieve. Okay. So do you want people to go to your website? Do you want people to call you? Do you want people to engage with um, the post and like it, share it, comment on it? Or do you want people to send you more messages? It's up to you. Most of the time, I'm always sending people to a website because I have the website set up the way I need it to be set up for. Um, so I'm going to do website visitors because when they click that link for me, this is where it'll send them to. And because I know this is where it's going to send them to, and I know that this page is um, primed for um, sells and generating leads, I want them coming here. So I have no problem with them coming here because I know I'll generate leads as a result of that. So I've got my goal. I leave off advantage and creative. And the reason why is because if you turn on advantage and creative, it's going to modify your image um, to fit different aspect ratios. I make images the way I want them to be served in my ads. I don't want the platform serving my ads in a different way. Um, you might be different, but I always turn that off. Now it's going to ask if you're in a special ads category. Some businesses are in a regulated ads category as it pertains to social media. So if you sell, offer financial services, if you offer real estate, or if your ad is for employment, um, or if you're cryptocurrency, um, investment related, uh, there's a few others, then you will fit a special ads category. Unless you fit any of those um, categories, you are not. When you turn this on, it changes how you are able to target. Um, and that can be a problem uh, for some businesses. So it's something to be mindful of. Audience is where we are going to spend some time. Because you do not want to just use one of these, you know, people who follow your profile, unless you're trying to get people who follow that profile. Um, you don't want to use people who follow your profile and people similar to them, unless you are specifically trying to target those people. You're always going to want to say people you choose for targeting, and you're going to choose a new demographic group for every ad that you create. So we're going to hit the little pencil sign here. So you're going to get started with your age group. You know, for me, I'm going to say 18 to 55, maybe. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd stick with my 18 because there's young people that are in business these days. For locations, you know, for me, because I serve the Tri-Cities, I'm going to get rid of Bristol and I'm going to drop a pin um, right in between the Tri-Cities. And then I'm going to click this and drag it out to about 15 miles. So it has Bristol. Um, we, we needed about 20 miles, I guess, to get Johnson City. Yeah, so in, that way it has the whole Tri-Cities in there for me because I like working local. So I've got my geographic location. Now, detailed targeting utilizes Facebook's unique algorithm to understand what people are interested in. And it's pretty darn tootin accurate. So, you know, for me, um, I would be targeting small business owners, um, uh, Facebook page admins, because you have to have a Facebook page if you're a business. Um, you know, those are some good options. If I was you know, you can type literally anything. If this was um, 
food based ad. Um, let's see, fast food. They have you know fast food and drinks, so it's going to show your ad to people that um, are interested in fast food, and they know based on their geographic locations and things they search on their phone. Um, you know, if I was a bar, I would say you know night clubs, nightlife, night stuff like that. Um, if I was a clothes company, you know, fashion stuff. Um, and you know, it's, it's not so black and white. There's a lot of gray area and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of complexities you can think about too, um, when it comes to targeting, because sometimes you have to work around an object. So say if they don't have any available, um, interests that you can target that pertain to your business in particular, or sometimes you can use those targeting efforts and find that it's just not working at all. You're not getting any traffic. Um, and that happens oftentimes, and that involves us to be tricky. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes um, it's harder for real estate agents just to target homeowners and things because of the fact it's a protected industry. But you can target, you know, people that are part of the homeowners association or you know things like that. People that are interested in home improvement, still targeting people that own houses, but you can't just target people that own homes, if that makes sense. So you want to make sure you target people and spend time targeting people that um, are interested in things that are pertaining to your business specifically um, for this ad specifically. So then when you're done, you click your save audience and then you'll see this audience here. I didn't choose any demographic, but you get what I'm saying. You'll see this audience here. You'll scroll down and you will choose, you'll scroll down and you'll choose the duration, how many days you want it to run uh, or the end date. Um, and then you can select your total budget to be spread out across those days. And by those metrics, it's going to give you an estimated daily results um, readout right here. Now, a rule of thumb, you always want to at least spend about $5 a day. You want to spend really idealistically about, you know, 10 to 20 a day um, if you can afford to for an ad to really perform well. Um, and then, you know, after you get this set up, you'll click boost post now. But if you're running an ad for, you know, say get more website visitors, and say we click boost post now and then the ad set up and it starts running, right? You will want to consider going back to that post after you've boosted it for the website traffic and boost it again to run at the same time as the other boosted post um, for the goal of engagement. And the reason being is because, like I said earlier in the intro to this crash course, it'll serve the engagement to people that'll like, comment, or share the ad. So it'll gain some social validation, which will make your website traffic ad perform better on that same ad. So I would, I would highly consider also running a boost on that same post for engagement. And then you're still going to target the same people inevitably, but um, it'll show it to people. It's AI algorithm knows people that are more likely to like, comment, or share a post. And that's who it's going to share this ad to. So I would always, whenever I'm running ads, be mindful of running an engagement ad on the same ad that I'm trying to pull traffic from or do lead generation from when it comes to Facebook, because more people will believe me and interact with an ad if there's 50 plus 25 plus comments likes shares on that ad it boosts the performance of the legion or the website traffic but yeah then after you get that set up you set your days your budget um your placements because you can select where it's going of course on facebook only or instagram and facebook click boost post now and your engagement ad will be running with your other ad. 
but I hope you found this valuable about Facebook ads. This is the easy way to get into Facebook ads, just simply boosting posts. You can see though, you're very limited by options that you have. You're very confined to what you can set up, but it is the easiest way to start getting some traffic to your business and to start understanding a little bit about marketing and conversion rates. So I strongly suggest, you know, if you can't afford to work with um, a marketing consultant or professional, then definitely, you know, try to boost some posts, make sure you're tar targeting the right people and you will find some success there. In the next little segment of this workshop, we are going to get into Google ads and we are getting into that right now. Let's go. All right. Now we are going to get into Google search ads and it's not as complicated to get started in the way that I'm going to show you today. I think you'll find it um, pretty all right. So there's two things you need to do. You need to have ads.google.com is where we're going to be going. But I also like to have the website I'm running the ad to um, or the ad on pulled up to. So I'm going to pull up my website um, also. But if you want to pull up your website that you'll be running the ad to um, in a new tab, that way you can just copy and paste it when you get there. Okay, so let's get to it. So on Google Ads, you're going to click Start Now because you probably don't have an account. For me, I'm going to click Sign In. After you click Start Now, it's going to walk you through the setup process. I'm going to click Sign In while you get going with that. And feel free to pause this video right now. Um, that way you can get through that setup process. After you get through the initial setup process, you're going to be at an overview page. Okay, Click Campaigns because this is where you're going to work from. You're gonna click this plus button right here that says create campaign and click new campaign. I'm gonna ask you to choose your objective. So it, it offers you a bunch of different objectives, you know, what you want to do. For this, we're going to click create campaign without a goals objective because we're going to select the objective later in the creation of the campaign. So then it is going to ask you about the campaign type. We are going to be using search. It's going to ask for a conversion goal, but we do not need one because we are going to be measuring the actual instances of people converting over as opposed to Google telling us that someone have converted. So we're gonna hit continue. And then it's going to say, select the results you want to get from this campaign. We're going to say website visits. You're going to go back to that tab and copy your website URL and paste it there. And then we're going to name the campaign. So I like to name this whatever the type of ad it is. You know, so for this Google search website homepage. That way, if I have 50 or 60 different campaigns running at the same time, which I do sometimes, I know what campaign is which. So then we're going to go ahead and hit continue. It's going to say, are you, you know, starting a new campaign or finishing a draft? We're starting a new one. It says, what do you want to focus on? We are going to focus on clicks. Now we can focus on conversions and other things, but it's a little more um, intense to get going on and where this is your first ad, I'm trying to show you, you know, the easiest way possible. You do have the ability to manage a maximum cost per click bid limit, which is what I do with all of my clients, but it takes a lot of day-to-day -day changing on those ads and where you guys wouldn't know for the metrics that you need to look for, um, we are going to leave that unchecked and let its AI try to do the best job possible for a maximum cost per click bid limit. So we're going to go ahead and click next. And then here, it's going to say, what networks do you want to be um, shown on? You do not want to include Google search partners. And you do not want to include Google Display Network because you are simply because you are simply only wanting to run it on Google's search network, their native search network. 
And we are only wanting to get people that are searching for certain keywords, which is why we don't care about the display network either. There's a specific reason we are setting up this ad only for the search network of Google. So locations is where you're going to target the geographic location you want your ads um, shown in. So here we can enter another location, click advanced search, and either hit a radius or a location. And for me, being local and wanting to target local, I'm going to do the radius. And I will say Bristol TN and click target. And then I'll probably do 25 miles around Bristol. And then I click save. And then under location options, it says presence or interest or presence. You want to select presence because it's people that are specifically located in that area or those areas when they search the term that they search to see your ad. If it's interest included, it could be people in Bangladesh that are searching things that show that they're interested in that area. You want specifically people in that area. So, we scroll down, make sure it's only English if you're an English-based business. Um, if it doesn't matter, you can add other languages, but for me, English. Um, we do not care about audience segments because we are going to be utilizing keyword-based search terms. Um, and then we look over here, um, start and end dates. If you want to add an end date, you can set it there. You can optimize, but I love their AI optimizing on best performing ads because it's going to take the ads you create, the different variants that you use, and it's going to select which ads perform the best to serve those ads. And I prefer that. Ad schedule all day is fine for me because it's based off of searches. So we'll go ahead and click next. Now here, it's pulling out Keyword suggestions based on what's on my website. Some of them will be right, but most always all will be wrong. So select all those keywords and delete them. So these are the keywords we are going to be entering that give Google the ability to search. I mean, that give Google the ability to display our ads when a certain term is searched. So I will say marketing. Near me is a wonderful addition to your search term because that's what a lot of people search. They're searching for a marketing consultant or, a, you know, a, a restaurant or whatever. They a lot of times say near me. And the reason it doesn't matter is because it's only going to show to people that are in the area you, you specified it to show. So anyone in the Tri-Cities that searches marketing consultant near me or web designer near me will see my ad. You get the genius behind it. Um, you know, so some other things, custom website builder, anything that pertains to your business that a customer might potentially search for is what you need to add here as keyword. You can add an unlimited amount of keywords here, but only add keywords that you think a customer for your business would be searching for if they were looking for a business like your business. After every keyword, you're gonna hit enter and go to a new line. So every keyword search term will be on its own line. I'm gonna write just a couple more for example purposes, but you can already guess what kind of keywords you're using for yours, right? And notice that sometimes, you know, like web designer near me and then web designer, still two different search terms. Um, so that's why I did that. So go ahead and add all the keywords that are relevant for your business there. And then we'll get into making the actual ad. So the ad itself that you create on Google is completely different than one for social media. And it's because you don't need images for Google because it's simply a search ad. 
And a search ad you can see here is just like if we were to search something on Google right now. Um, say we search marketing and we scroll down and we're looking and looking and looking. Oh, sponsored. This is a, a Google ad right here, right? So anytime you search anything, there's going to be sponsored ads on um, what you're searching for. You just half the time don't notice that they're there. So that's what a Google ad is, okay? So the headline is going to be in the big and blue stuff. So I'm going to, for headline, get the basic points of what I do. Or what I offer. You know, so just some headlines that pertain to my business and what I offer, right? And, you know, some of them headlines, uh, they can be anything. They don't just have to be what you offer. It can be, you know, trendy little, it can be trendy little things that would make someone click your ad. Um, So like for marketing for small businesses, you know, that would be another trendy little one to use for um, a headline. And then for description, you know, you have more space. So this is where I would hit, you know, the big points. Um, You know, so like uh, helping small business owners increase their monthly profits, get a free consultation, you know, things that make sense to do with your brand and your company and your offering specifically to that customer seeing this ad that would make them interact with it and then click to go onto your website to learn more. Um, you know, so I would enter, a, you know, two descriptions here about your business, um, you know, things that are high action things. And one thing that you can do is search, you know, what your kind of competitors have in theirs that are running ads that are performing well. So if I'll say web designer, because that's like a competitor to me, right? So, you know, um, here's uh, one of my direct competitors, uh, digital coast marketing. So, you know, this is what their headline is. This is what their description is. So, you know, whatever they're putting in their description, I would maybe work around, you know, how things sound there to get some ideas for my own if I needed some ideas. You know, so, you know, add, I would add at least three. Um, hopefully, if you can come up with a fourth description, because the more descriptions you have and the more headlines you have, the more options the Google AI tool has to choose from when um, cycling through to find out what performs best for your business. So I would do that. I would add a bunch of different headlines, a bunch of different descriptions that pertain to your business. And then when you're done, click done and you have your ad made. So then we click next to set our budget. And for a Google ad budget, I would recommend not going any less than 14, I mean, not to not go any less than about $7 a day. So if all you can afford to do is $7 a day, that's fine, do it. But try not to go less than $7 a day because it will limit um, how many people can see those ads. Um, 
optimally, I generally don't go over about $20 a day on one specific ad. Now, if I have a company with a large budget, you know, like with Backyard Environments, you know, we have 10 different individual ads running for them at the same time to different pages on their website. And the reason why is it keeps the cost per click cheaper um, than if we put the whole daily budget on one ad. And it diversifies um, who we are serving these ads to, um, to make sure the right people are seeing the right ads. And it gives us the ability to customize them down to the right particular person a little bit better in an SEO way. But it's a more advanced technique, um, you know, because we're serving ads, um, you know, say specifically for people located in Fort Worth, they're going to a web page that is specifically for people in Fort Worth versus people in Dallas. They're going to a web page that's specifically for people in Dallas versus, you know, you get what I'm saying. So every city gets a different web page and it's a more advanced um, type of way of running advertisements, but it also keeps the cost per click down, but it makes people feel special because the website's custom to them and it increases the um, conversion rate. But yeah, I would recommend somewhere between $7, less than $20 is what you would aim for. Um, click next. And then it's going to say it's ready to publish. You just need to review it and it'll check for errors. Um, and of course, it's going to say fix your head, your budget, your keywords and stuff, because I didn't finish it out. I just, you know, was giving you the example of how it needed to be done. Um, but you'll review this whole page and make sure that it looks good. And if it looks good and it's ready to go at the bottom of the page, there will be a button that says publish. You click publish and then your ad will start running after 24 hours. It takes Google 24 hours on average to review your ad to make sure that it's not anything bad and it's not against their community guidelines or community standards. Just like Facebook has community standards, Facebook will generally approve an ad in about two to three hours after you go to publish it. But Google sometimes takes up to 24. So don't be worried if your ad doesn't start running immediately. It will always take uh, quite a few hours to get um, approved and published. But this concludes our short crash course on small business marketing. And I hope you found value out of this because I wish I'd have had someone give me just kind of the basic ropes when I first started um, in my own business. And it would have been helpful to me if I had known how to run some of these basic ads, because even though it doesn't include the advanced cases and the advanced ways to properly set up things, it's enough to get you going and to be successful with ads. And then when you prove the concept of ads and how they're helpful to your business in your own business's marketing efforts, then you will find that there is value sometimes in hiring a marketing consultant that can, you know, really amp up things or even find value to take time to learn it yourself um, to save those overhead expenses. If you need further help or if you'd like my assistance in helping your business grow, feel free to click under this video and, you know, you can get a free consultation and I'll pull together a strategy plan for you and uh, write you a custom plan of action for free for what I would do to get your business going in the right direction. And um, I look forward to see your success as a business owner. Um, I know that you can do it. You know, oftentimes a lot of people are afraid to fail, which is what stops them from being successful or stops them in their walk um, into being an entrepreneur or a business owner. You guys already took that step, but I find myself looking for ways to fail. And the reason why is sometimes it takes you, in order to succeed, it takes you to fail hundreds of times to find the right way to do things because we only learn from experience. So I never feel failure. I, I mean, I never fear failure. And I hope that you never fear it as well. Look for ways to learn from your failure if you ever have any moments like that in the future. And no, you got someone in your corner rooting for you. It was a pleasure to be able to, to, to do this for you and to help you through this marketing workshop. And I look forward for your continued success. Take it easy.